Welcome back. If you're just tuning into this series, be sure to watch the first four because the, the, the first four videos bring you up to this point and everything is just as important. If you really want to have super accurate ammunition, you can't leave anything out. So we're going to talk about primers today. This is probably one of the most discussed topics on the blogs that I read. Um, there's a lot of misinformation and a lot of misunderstanding about what primers are. You know, essentially we're going to talk about the primer that goes into a, uh, this, is a this is a large rifle case for a um, 270 Winchester, but whether you're loading primers for pistols, small, uh, small rifle primers, large rifle primers, whatever it is, they all function exactly the same in all the modern primers that we have used in the last uh, several decades are exactly the same as they have always been. They, a box of primer is, this is a, this is a crude sketch, but as you can see, you've got, you've got the primer, you've, you've got the, basically the primer cup. This is a cutaway. You've got the, the cup itself, and then behind that cup, you've got a slurry of priming compound. That's a very highly explosive priming compound. Um, manufacturers have to use uh, extraordinary steps to be sure that they don't blow up the facility. So everything is highly controlled in the, in the uh, section where they make primers. Uh, they work with this priming compound while it's very wet uh, to prevent any, basically prevent disasters. And underneath that, you have an anvil. And if you notice, the anvil is not fully seated. And that's part of the process of reloading accurate ammo. When, when the anvil is seated, that anvil does not contact the top of this. My proportions here are a little bit off. Uh, it, it does not actually compress or contact the primer cup. It, maintains a space even after it's seated and that space is there so that when the primer is struck by the firing pin naturally it closes it on the anvil and it's like striking it's like striking it with a uh, hammer on a stone and it it causes that percussion that's a three-legged that's a three-legged anvil and that three-legged anvil sits on top of basically it stands on top of the uh, flash hole in your case and uh, it, it sits there rigidly. And I mentioned, I mentioned earlier in this series, it's really not, it's absolutely, despite all the nonsense that goes on, cleaning primer pockets is not going to do anything, any, anything. Because those, those three legs, when you seat that primer, those three legs bear directly onto brass. They, they, they crush right down through whatever kind of carbon might be there, and they, they sit solidly on brass. That's, that's all that's essential is to make sure that that anvil is sitting, sitting on brass. Whatever dirt happens to be in there has absolutely nothing to do with anything. Trust me, I've done plenty of, I've done plenty of investigation of that personally, and a lot of accuracy testing with cruddy primer cups primer pockets and ones that are absolutely sparkling clean. There's no difference whatsoever in accuracy. There are differences in accuracy when it comes to primers many times though. And I'll talk about that. The, um, the way a primer is seated is very important. How you seat a primer can be as varied as simply using, you know, the, your, your bench mounted uh, Reloading press, you know, that, that using that big lever to, you know, gently insert that primer and press it into place. I've used bench-mounted dedicated priming systems, which have a, a, a shorter handle that gives you a little bit more feel. And, you know, you can, have a, you can have a tray or you can have a tube full of primers that feed one at a time, and they make the process very, very quick, uh, and they have a little bit more feel. Depending on, you know, the, the less leverage you have, the more feel you have, actually, was what it boils down to. I really like to use, I really like to use what I've been using probably since, I would say, about the late 70s I began using this. Um, this is a uh, Lee hand priming tool. 
it's uh, very inexpensive. As you can see, it's uh, the, the plastic is the plastic is old and discolored. Uh, it actually suffered a uh, percussive accident incident one time, and you can see there's uh, there's a burn mark right here. So that's why you know never discount wearing safety glasses. It says right on here, uh, always use safety glasses. So you know that's vitally important. When that went off, it was a pretty pretty shocking and uh, <laughs> it it uh, scared the hell out of me. Uh, these, you know, when a primer goes off unexpectedly in an open environment, it's very, very, uh, it's very, very dangerous. So be sure to wear safety glasses, no matter no matter how you're priming. But this this system, uh, I find, is very, very quick and easy. It uses it uses any number of shell holders that are available from Lee. RCBS makes a similar system, which you know, it, price means nothing. Uh, it, this, this is very simple. Uh, with your thumb, you, you depress the primer. And what's really nice about this is the, the, the sense of feel. You can feel that primer sliding right up, and then you can, feel that, you can feel that anvil seating itself in place and basically sliding up. And You can actually feel the anvil sliding up inside that primer cup. So it's, it's a very, very nice tactile way to do it. Is it more accurate than uh, some of the other systems? I really don't. I, I can't say for sure at all. Uh, I can tell you that it's more exacting. I can feel that primer going in and I can really make sure it's home. I can feel it with my thumb. With this press right here, I don't have that sense of, I don't have that sense of dexterity. You can't, you can't feel the primer going in. There's too much leverage. Even with some of the bench mounted systems where you have a handle that's about like this long, you can feel it a little bit better, but it still has an awful lot of leverage and you really can't have that sense of, uh, that, that real sense of tactile understanding of what's happening uh, underneath that uh, primer. So I like that. That's to me is, that, that assures me that all the primers are gonna go in exactly the same way. And why that's important is very simple. If you have a primer that does not fully seat that anvil, if the, if the anvil uh, for some reason is not fully seated up inside that primer cup, it means that it's going gonna, it's gonna to take away some of that blow when the, when the firing pin strikes because that blow is going to be you know, cushioned by the fact that that uh, primer cup is not fully seated. If it's, if it's crushed too far, if it's seated too far, you can reduce the amount of space uh, between the anvil and that primer cup to some degree uh, because you might, you might possibly buckle the top of that primer cup. Uh, you can flatten it a little bit. And if you, it's not going to set it off, but if you flatten the top, over flatten the top of this primer cup, you're going to reduce the space between that anvil and the primer cup. So you don't want to do that. You don't want to over. You don't want to over. You know, over pressure it, and you don't want to under pressure it. So I like that. Uh, you can you can spend as much or as little as you want on those. But this one here has been just as satisfactory as any, and it's the least it's the least expensive of the lot. So uh, pick and choose. Now, and by the way, there's an entire set. I've got the entire set of. Uh, shell holders for it. It's a special shell holder that does not go in a standard press. press. It, does not have, it's, it does not have the uh, bottom portion of the uh, shell holder. So these are specially made and it, they're not too expensive. You can buy them one at a time or as a set. Now, I've got two sets of primers here, small rifle primers. I'm not going to be using small rifle primers, but uh, I've got small rifle, these are CCI BR4, that means bench rest number four, and I've got CCI number 400. They're both exactly the same size primer. They're both small rifle primers. Right there, you can see on the box, they're both small rifle primers. So, <clears throat> what's all the What's all the hullabaloo? Well, there is absolutely no difference whatsoever in the priming compound. There's no difference in the mechanical construction of them. They're both exactly the same, absolutely exactly the same. You're not getting a, you're not getting a different primer by buying a match primer over a standard primer. 
what you're buying is labor. You're buying, you're buying the time that it takes to be more meticulous about applying that paste to the card. And all those primers are sitting in the holes in a card and the applicator is, uh, the person who does this is uh, got to be very careful about smearing that paste into all those cups. When it's done for standard primers, it's done sufficiently to make sure that all those holes are filled and wiped off with this. Basically, it's a type of a, a trowel that's used that wipes over the whole card and then it's cleaned off and it's very, very carefully done so that nobody gets blown up. And it's like, like I say, it's, it's done with a wet paste. When you pay, when you pay 50% more for match primers, you're simply paying for the person to slow down and to be much more careful. Sometimes it, it might take twice as long to apply that paste to make sure that every one of those cups, there's no dimples, that every single one of those cups is exactly the same. That's the only thing you're paying for. You're paying, you're paying the same people, really. You're paying, you're paying for the same skill. Uh, the people who do it have been doing it for years, and they know what they're doing. I've shot some of the very finest groups I've ever shot in my life with standard primers. They're not, they're not any better than the, than the groups that I have shot with match grade primers. If I, were, if I were shooting in competition, I would buy match grade primers. I bought these match grade primers simply because that was all that was available one day, and it co they cost me another, another $30 over. These, these are cheap now. Um, when I bought these, these were $52.99 for uh, BR4 match primers. They're probably, they're probably over $100 now. I don't know. But um, when I bought them, it was simply because that was available. They don't shoot any better than the standard 400s. It's just that I have the assurance that if I'm using that in a competition that I don't have a blooper that is maybe that one primer cup was not filled you know as much as the others maybe maybe there was you know a little bit of a divot in the uh, cup as it was being filled so they just take a little bit more time they're just they're just done a little bit more meticulously and you know the inspection process they're probably done in smaller quantities so they can watch it more carefully you're paying for labor that's all but they're exactly the same primer for standard shooting unless you're in competition i really don't i don't recommend that you go out and spend another 50 percent more for for match grade primers because you're simply not going to realize anything on the target you can probably shoot all day long and never see any difference on the on the paper what you're going to see is that that once or twice every so many rounds where a shot just flies out a little bit from the others because it didn't have the same amount of priming compound. So that's all there is about that. When it comes to different brands, that's another thing. This is, this is uh, Remington uh, primers. And again, I had, this is recently purchased. I had to buy Benchrest primers because those are the last ones to go off the shelves and that was all that was left to me. So I had to spend, I have to spend an extraordinarily ridiculous amount of money to buy Benchrest primers just to get primers, but I would not have bought them otherwise. So anyway, but different brands will have, naturally they have proprietary formulations and there can be a difference in the brisance, the amount of flash that comes off that primer. And that can affect, that will affect the amount of pressure and velocity that you have inside the case. Whether it's Federal, CCI, Winchester, uh, wh whomever it is, uh, Fiocchi, they all make they all make excellent primers. You know, it's it, there's a big safety issue. They have to be very concerned about how they maintain their quality control for making primers. So you're getting a good product no matter who you buy them from. What you're buying is a difference in, in flash level, it just simply because it's one manufacturer or another. Does it make any difference? Sometimes people say, well, I, I will only buy, you know, Federal 210M primers. I'll only buy the match primers from Federal. Well, you know, it, it's a little bit wasteful to simply buy nothing but, you know, Federal primers, match primers, simply because uh, you're going out hunting or something or even go prairie dog shooting. It doesn't, make a, it doesn't make a bit of difference. If you're in the competitive league and you're looking to get that big trophy, that's where it makes a difference. Spend your money there. Now, as I say, brands do not make a difference. What it does is, and I mentioned this in that other video, it will simply change the flash rate, the, the intensity of the flash, 
whatever flash that the manufacturer is providing for you is absolutely sufficient to set off all the powder in your case. What, you, what you're getting is just a, a, simply a difference in the flash in, in the flash, flash brilliance and that can cause a shift in how your gun groups from one from one powder charge to another. So whereas maybe one primer might like 50 grains of powder, or the particular powder you're using, one primer might use 50 grains, you change to a different brand, you might be using 49.4 or something like that to get the same velocity, to get exactly the same pressure and to get the same accuracy. Or you might be using 51.2. Just simply a change, it, it'll, it'll cause a shift in where that accuracy occurs. It's not going to change the accuracy though, and that's where I think I, a lot of, there's an awful lot of baloney about that. What I recommend is that whenever you buy primers, to try to buy them, you know, I try to always buy primers at least in a, in a box of a thousand because, you know, if you're doing any amount of loading, those primers will be with you for a while and that means that you'll have the same lot to work with and so you don't have, you don't have this constant problem, nagging problem of having one, you know, having one set of primers performing differently than the other. So you'll, you'll hear people say, you know, well, I, 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 was, using, I was using Winchester primers, uh, you know, for the last 10 years and I shifted to CCI primers and my accuracy went, it went out the window. And well, it didn't really, the accuracy might have gone out the window for that particular charge of powder, but if you just simply went back to the bench and tried upping and lowering the, uh, just try out different loads, you'll find that you'll have your, your accuracy restored. So it's, it's not a matter of the brand of primer that one is inferior to the other or superior to the other. They're just different. And they, the, the velocity pressures will shift from one brand to another. I try to stick to the same brand as much as I can, but in this day and age, you know, I haven't bought, I haven't bought Remington seven and a half primers for a long time because you couldn't even get them for a long time. This was the seven and a half small rifle primers that was, the, you know, that was the invention for uh, the 222, which later on became the 222 Remington Magnum and the 223 and the 221 Fireball and all the all those that were based on the 222. That was a magnumized primer rather than the number six primer, which was made for the Hornet and for cases like that with smaller capacity. This was a, basically a hotter primer. So uh, they're all they're all good. So that's all I have to say about that. Let's step over the bench and load some. Now, as I said before, safety glasses absolutely a must. Be sure you wear uh, adequate eye protection. Um, I happen to be loading Winchester Large Rifle Magnum primers for this particular load because I frankly ran out of standard primers and they're not available right now. And uh, the 270 is a good candidate for uh, Magnum primers because, as I mentioned in a previous video, Magnum primers really should only be used in cases which approach 60 grains of powder capacity or more. Uh, and and the, the, my 270 load uses almost 60 grains of powder and I find that Magnum primers work very well with it. Uh, all it does is it provides a little bit extra flash so that uh, flash intensity so that uh, it can set off larger quantities of powder. And as I mentioned in a previous video, the one thing you don't want to do is you don't want to, you don't want to have more flash than is necessary to set it off because uh, you, you be, you're bumping the bullet forward into the lands before the powder, before the powder has ignited. And you don't really want to uh, be upsetting the, uh, upsetting the bullet uh, unnecessarily. And that's why, you know, that's why a small Small primers uh, became very popular for certain cartridges simply because they, they do the least disruption inside the case before the powder is burned. So that's that. Don't, don't be buying Magnum primers because uh, people tell you that they're better. They're not better. They're just necessary for when you get beyond 60 grains of powder. So that's what I'm going to be loading. Um, never, ever, ever store primers uh, en masse. Don't, don't ever you know, dump them into a jar, a mason jar or anything like that, or even to a, into a, any kind of cardboard container, no matter what it is, these are highly, highly explosive. Uh, these will blow your house up. Uh, there have been factory accidents that have been uh, quite catastrophic because primers have, uh, you know, un, 
unnecessarily detonated. So the way to do this is simply turn your, turn your primer tray, invert it like that, and just uh, spin it until you get your primers. I'm not speaking about anything new here for those of you who have been around, but some of you maybe have never loaded before. And uh, this, this is, operates by gravity. Just leave the tray in the up, upright position. And um, one at a time, just I'll show you what I'm doing. I'm just sliding that, sliding that primer up. And at this point, I can, feel that, I can feel that primer come to a dead stop. If you want, you can turn it 90 degrees and do it again in case there's any in case there's any angle involved. You don't want to crush you don't want to crush and distort the primer cup because you're going to be closing that gap and uh, losing out on some of that percussion that you that you need. Again, just slow slowly slide it right in. You don't want to rush this. You don't want to slap that in because that's where you can have that's where you can have a uh, unwanted detonation. And uh, I always turn my face away as I'm squeezing that. Uh, you can't be too careful. Uh, it's, it's very rare to have uh, primers go off, but when they do, it's, it's, a, it's a hell of a problem. And I, like I say, for super accurate ammunition, I like to turn the cases 90 degrees and give it another, another squeeze. Don't, don't crush it. Just simply squeeze it up until you feel that, until you feel that, uh, soft until you feel that soft seating of the anvil. That's all you do. So there you go. It only took me less than five minutes to charge each of these cases with primers and uh, it's very easy to do with that tool. You have such you have such nice dexterity. Your thumb is a fabulous gauge. You can tell from one to another that they feel exactly right when that when that anvil is seated all the way up in. Uh, you just know it with your thumb. And when you turn that when you turn that case ninety degrees, sometimes you can feel it just go up just a slight slight bit more. So it's nice to turn them ninety degrees. This is this is the stuff you don't have to do for run of the mill shooting, but for that top accuracy. Uh, all these little details make a difference. Never, ever, ever go out and buy a primer seating gauge. You know, there's, there's been fools out there in the market that have told people that if you uh, measure the, the distance between the, you make sure that you use a gauge to measure the distance between the, uh, the case rim and uh, the, the primer, that that's going to accomplish something. That accomplishes nothing. You may simply have all your primers not seated sufficiently deep, or you may be crushing them. Uh, what you want to do is make sure that you just seat them by hand. When they're seated, they're seated. You can't measure it. The, the measurement may even be different from one case to another if you have different brands of cases. So there's absolutely there's nothing that you can measure. Your thumb is the good measure, or even if you're doing it on your press, you can, you can feel with your, with your press handle when it's at uh, home. The only thing is you've got, that, you've got that super leverage, so you don't have that tactile understanding of what's going on inside the primer cup. So that's all there is to it. The next episode is going to be about charging with powder, measuring and charging with powder. So see you then. And for my Patreon donors, thank you so much for your assistance. Your financial help has been vital in helping me, you know, get these things. Um, as you can see, I mean, the components are just crazy right now. Um, if you're not subscribed to Patreon, go visit my channel. It's listed here below. And uh, by all means, subscribe to this channel right now. Hit that bell. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, and God bless.